Right, here we are back at the flat with our pack lunch. I was really pleased to catch that Zander. In fact, I caught three Zander that night. Three Zander. But man, was I tired. So the floor is done in this flat. I'm back again. I want to try and go fishing again if I can. <sighs> I'm going to hit the bathroom. That PVA should have dried off. Well, it will have dried off. I had the windows open, give it a bit of air circulation, which is better. I've now got some really bad frosts coming in, so I'll shut the windows down. And uh, I'm going to try and get at least one layer of uh, tiles on there. Now, I'm using quite big tiles, so I don't really want to stack them like bricks, because anybody who's a bricklayer will know you only go, say, I'm going to say, two feet high. Because once you get up here, the weight of these bricks pushes all the mortar out on the bricks below, and you end up with uneven bricks that could be unstable. I figure the same must happen with tiling, because I've never, I'm not a professional tiler. I've been doing it 40 odd years, but self-taught, as they say. So I'm going to try and at least get one band up there, because I've got to hit this room as well, get it cleared out completely, repair the wardrobe. I don't think I'll get time to get the carpet. Don't tell the wife, but I'm not going to get the car because I want to go fishing. Let's get the bathroom start getting ourselves sorted out. That's all gone off now. That's good news. That's dry. As I say, I'm just going to make, I'll probably make a start down the base under the window, running around in one level. I'm going to do two colours here. Wait for this. I was given all these over at uh, a big tile warehouse. I said, Is there rubbish around the back? They said, Yeah, because they're all discontinued and they're odd sizes and odd colours. When I say old cars, it might be three or four boxes instead of 20 boxes. Are they for sale, I said? They said, no, you can take them. Oh, joy. So, I might even be able to get some tiling down in here for nothing. Obviously, I had to buy the adhesive. Now, a few people out there, DIY people, might not, you know, realise I'm doing this all on my own. Now then, a few people out there might not realise he used PVA. What's PVA? It's like an adhesive. If I can, if I can call it, it's like a, it's like a good, forget the brand. It's just PVA. You can get loads of PVA. It's a, I want to call it a bonding building and adhesive glue. It's for porous surfaces. You mix it in different grades. Say three parts of the uh, three parts water to one part adhesive, five parts water to one part adhesive, depending how porous your surfaces are. And basically, it seals it up either for plastering or tiling. When you're putting something on, say, a very dry, porous wall, if I put, for instance, uh, my tile adhesive on the tile, put it onto a non-PVA wall, that is going to suck. The, the wall here is very porous, and it's going to suck a lot of the moisture out of the adhesive, too, out of the building adhesive, you know, this um, uh, tiling or plastering too quickly. Dry out too quickly, in the case of plaster, it will crack. In the case of tiles, they might pop off. So let's basically imagine a skin of glue all over the walls there. That's enough tit tat that's just a point of interest to you who might want to do some DIY stuff themselves. Porous surfaces, hit it with some PVA first, not expensive, makes life so much easier. Okay, this is not an instructional on doing tiling, this is me doing tiling to get my job on my property out of the way so I can go fishing. You can use a scoring type of cutter or you can use one of these. I think I'll pick this up for free as well. It's a disc. It has a wheel there that cuts through the tiles and bear in mind these are quite thick tiles. So I'm going to do it very slowly and cut through each one. Now, obviously that metal against the clay and the porcelain ceramics here gets hot. So in there, Inside there, you put some water. Now, having done, I want to say hundreds of properties, a lot of properties, don't put too much water in there because it sprays through the wheel. You just want enough to cover the wheel. Get the directions, get all that health and safety stuff, get it all out the way. You know, I'm just doing it. This is the way I'm doing it on my property. But one thing I will say I'll use, it's noisy. Get yourself a pair of ear defenders like this. I wear glasses, I can't wear uh, other protection glasses over these glasses, they just totally fog up. I can't wear breathing, mask over here for the dust, it fogs up. So get yourself, God knows what they need now, get yourself the gloves, get yourself the glasses, the goggles, the ear defenders, the ear defenders, whatever you've got to get, check it all out before you do it. I'm going to give it a go and I'm going to probably put these vertically. Now the latest fashion is to put them horizontally. I can't do that because I've noticed these, being free, have a pattern here. I'm not altogether sure which way the pattern goes, but as it's my own property, I can put them up whichever way I want. 
There we go. Then. I'm going to start. I've just about got enough packs here, these three ones they gave me, to put on the base and make the dark colour at the bottom and then see how far I go, a little banding at the top. The rest I can paint. So, have a measure up, get yourself a level. Another thing you want is make sure, obviously, you get a level to mark to and mark it on thick pencil so you know where you're going. And if it gets to the edge here, which is probably two or three mil higher, I'm going to have to possibly step it up there. Just a touch, I don't know, I'll see how it goes. Suck it and see is the term. Well, I always get a wet cloth and get the surplus of any adhesive on the tile. And these ones are embossed ones. So if that dries on there, it's going to be a son of a gun to get off. Anyway, I've got the base level done all around the first border. Got it leveled up to be ages cutting around that toilet area. As it always does, the cuts take longer than anything else. But I'd better show you a few tips because if there's DIYers out there, they might be interested to load this. Now, if you're using one of these um, wheel types, just be sort of advised to keep topping up with water because it does grind off what, what's left of the pieces of tile, like the clay, the ceramics, the glaze, into there, and that will fill up eventually uh, with, let's say, sediment, or we'll call it sediment. So just keep topping up and you can always clean it out if you want. The other thing I think is important is you've got obviously your safety wheel guard here to stop it spraying all in your face, but when you get in here, if you're cutting, you don't want to be pushing with your thumb. Just a tip, take a woodworking tip out and just get a piece of scrap tile or scrap piece of wood and as you've got it lined up and you're making the cut through there, push it using a broken piece of tile, not your finger. Should anything slip, hopefully you'll all be okay because you know, you're using your tile instead of your thumb. You can cut it away, right the way through there, nice and thin. Take it off, switch off, don't mess about with anything while it's still running. You've got your tile there, obviously. You can have small tiles, 6x6, 4x4 inch, great big things, flooring tiles, the same principle applies. You need to have a key to the surface of the tile. Now if you look there, there's lots of little ridges there, isn't there? And what you should get is, when you get all your stuff, is a comb, what we call a comb. Who knows what it's called in the tile world? I'm calling it a comb. So all you tile heroes out there, for me, it's my comb. Might be combing the hair with it now. There's different grades there. You can see three big wide ones to say flooring, smaller ones, and smaller ones again for, for the smaller tiles. And you basically, I do want a piece of scrap for you. I don't want to waste anything. I smear it on. Obviously it's all gobby. So what you're trying to do is to get a, a bit of a bit of glue, if you like, call it glue, the adhesive, in between all these little holes if you can, because that's what's going to glue it to the wall. And for that, you use the comb and you can make an S shape if you want. You can make what shape you want, or just tell me what I want. I know some tile where that says you must do X's, I don't know. Look, just get a little bit of pattern to it like that. If you've got enough glue on there with that pattern, you push it on, don't bang it in the middle, because if there's a bow in the wall, especially a concave that's going away from you, you'll break the tile, okay? So just push it on level, check it with the spirit level, don't tap it with anything heavy, use your fingers, just work it, get it dead level, and then make sure you put your pegs in, the spacer pegs, around the edge, and just keep constantly checking whether it's going up or down your levels. You need to check your levels. I'm gonna check my levels, it's now half past one, I've done the base around here, the first edge of the border, Gonna have something to eat. Might even make a phone call, just check what the weather's like where well, I'm gonna go fishing. Right, grab time.
Well, just when I thought I bought myself some time, got the time in exactly where I wanted. The phone goes, it's Mike. He's got a leaking gutter, a curtain rail's hanging down, he can't open one window, and a couple of other jobs. We're going to have to rush over there. I think priority would be the gutter leaking because we've got a lot of rain coming sometime in the next 24 hours. Hey ho, that's a life, the exciting life of totally awesome fishing. No. Well, that looks a little bit different to when you last saw it. It took me another day to get all those tiles up, face off on that wall, cutting, 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 cutting all around the pipes. It's all grouted in, it's going off now. The next phase is probably tomorrow to buff this off. I can just see that they will all polish up. And I'll give you a little tip here, a totally awesome tip. I've done lots of tiling. No world expert at it, but I've done a lot of tiling. Don't leave the grout on there to dry, because it is a pain to get off. Much better get yourself a sponge, wash it all off as you go, and then the tile's relatively clean. You'll get a smear, obviously, from the residual uh, bit of grout on the rag. You just let it dry off, and then you can polish off like this. This is just going off now. And that'll all polish up. Same for the black. You can see on the black down below. Anyway, all I know is I'm finished. I'm going to get down the beach this time. I'm not going to go freshwater. I want to go beach fishing. Spring tides. Winter. No wind. No brainer. Let's get down the beach and see after this epic tiling situation. I've got plenty of work going downstairs next. If I can't at least squeeze four or five hours in. Don't forget, it's night time, so no big deal. Something surely must be on the bike. I'm out of here. Oh dear God, well, let's turn that out for you. I finally got that job finished, got the tiling done, can't do any more till I go in polish it the grout's got to go off bought myself a bit of time I'm down near the rods are out it's 5 30 and I can see I've got two uh, big baits out there bluey uh, half a bluey front and back sections that's the head section and tail section all whipped on going big something big might come along probably a blank but I'm hoping I can catch them white and maybe cook them up on the beach because I found a piece of slate up there and there's a way you can cook through the slate using the slate because I've got no frying pan or anything but I always keep some wood in the car anyway um, you know obviously because you do jobs on property you're going to need some got an old newspaper and I've always carried a lighter anyway so maybe I might get lucky I've got ragworm I've got some four or five times in and out of the freezer sand hills I've had to whip them around because they're almost liquid so I've got hardly any bait again but I've bought myself a bit of time as you can see I'm out here it's a big spring tide full moon so anybody who wants to know about uh, tidal systems, you can normally reckon on full moon and spring, a uh, new moon, which is the dark side, and the full moon being the top of the springs, give or take a day or two. So I've got spring tide, got no wind, flat calm, beautiful evening, not that cold. I'm not going to put up the uh, shelter. Fingers crossed. Keep an eye on those rods, see if anything comes along. A long day, but am I happy? Yes, I'm on the beach. Well, nothing yet on the big baits, but I did drop in on the supermarket on the way through. Picked up a packet of bacon, in case I don't catch any whiting, in case they're undersized. So I've got something to cook anyway. I think I'm getting a couple of taps on the worm baits, actually. Very, very small. Nothing on the big baits, so I wouldn't expect anything because it's not stirred up enough. It's very, very flat, calm. That's not good for big fish, generally. Let's have a look at this one in a minute. just sit on this nice damp groin. Well, one tip I've got, especially when night fishing, and there's a chance, outside chance of a cod, well listen, for me there's zero chance of the beach, but there is always a chance of a cod, is I like to put a bit of tension into the grip lead. Because at night, sometimes you can't see whether you've had a slack line bite. And a slack line bite is when a fish picks a bait up, moves off, and actually dislodges that grip lead, and the line falls slack. If you get that, that's a sign of a decent fish, big fish generally. Wind down, get all that stretch out the line, 
and you can strike and walk back up the beach, keep some pressure on it. So try and keep a bow in the rod like this. And if you see it suddenly like this and the line's hanging down, that's a big fish bite. Well, here we go, guys. It was worth it, wasn't it? Look, a nice white in. I can hardly see that light so fierce. A nice white in. No monster white in, just a white in. I'm not going to put him on the uh, cooking slate just yet, see if I can get a bigger one. They get much bigger than this and they're edible. I might do it and save the bacon. I'll have that for sandwiches tomorrow back at work. Just goes to show you that work was worth doing. Just a few hours, but at the right time when it's dark. Let's get this guy back. Okay, so what I've got here, grip lead, I'm only throwing it's about 40 yards. Three hook flapper. A little short snood there of half a rag. We only need half a rag worm. Especially when whiting fish. And look, you can use a whole worm, they just chew it down and you'll still catch the same fish. Why not save yourself some bait? This one is a piece of sandal and a piece of rag and I've whipped it on with thread. And the top one the same but we've reversed it. Put the sandal on first and then whipped it over and put a little tag in a ragworm on there. Slide that buffer bead down to hold it all in position. It's ready to go, let's get it out of the rod field and more whiting to come. There we go guys. I saw this nodding bite, you know, I thought, I wonder, is it, is it a codling, is it a codling? It's not, it's a dogfish. I don't even think he's hooked. I can't see any hook in there. He's just wrapped himself around and around trying to get hold of the bait. Luckily for me, if I can unwrap him here, I'll show him to you. But that was, I thought, a better fish, and it, indeed it was. Well, it's a beach fishing. Doggies are okay from the beach. I don't have a problem with them. Oh, yeah, he wasn't hooked at all. Was not hooked at all. There he is. Dogfish, and that was that tiny bait. Half a ragworm and half a sand eel. Turn around for the camera. Well, boy, I'll tell you what, I was glad I worked hard and got that time. Those short little trips can often pay off. Guys, it's kicking off big time. I got, look, there, I think you can see that. A triple shot on those tiny small hooks. I'm gonna have to do a talk about these small hooks and these rigs. Do you need all these fancy rigs with all the beads? I don't know, but they do seem to work. Here we go. Whiting. If you come untangled. Ooh. Guys, quite a bit of weight there. Whiting, whiting. Middle hook, another dogfish. I mean, what a great session. Really, I've got half the flood tide still to come. I started at the bottom of the tide, switch that up for you. I started at the bottom of the tide. There we go. Everything seems to be on the bite. Whitey dogfish. I mean, <laughs> it, oh, right in the kisser. Totally awesome fishing strikes again. Actually getting bites pretty regularly on this right hand brother. It seems to be the rat, definitely the rat of half a sandal, half a ragworm seems to be attracting the attentions of the dogs and the whiting. The big rods have been out over an hour. I've been doing a walk back, just leaving them out and walking back. Not that the tide's coming in fast, but come on fish. The temptation with a three hook flapper. Any pattern oster rig is to leave it out and try and get greedy and get another one, but of course that gives the first one a chance to get off. I mean, I mean what people, what? <laughs> a smooth hound, I mean, look, it's only a little smooth hound pup. Dogfish whiting, look at him go, looks like a little tote. Smooth hound. I mean, it's winter, what's happening, what's going on with the world? But look, he's obviously gone for that little bit of sandal, the red one's been chewed off, but he's gone for that little piece of sandal. I mean, what a session, what a session. That's unbelievable. Go smooth hound fishing in the summer, obviously they're much bigger. 
and you find they're tough to catch. You go fishing for whiting when you shouldn't be catching them, and you're catching dinky little chaps like this. I oh, mean, God, that must have been so lucky tying I did. Must do that again. Like this one, people. This one is a nice big whiting. The size of that one. Stop it, stop it, stop it from I show you to YouTube. That's a, that's a nice white in there. That's, a, that's a definitely an edible sized whiting. But you know what, I'm having such good sport with some horrendous slamming bites. It's such good sport, I think I'm gonna let him go because I've got that bacon to get back on with. But just let me show you. Can you see the teeth on them? Look at the little pin teeth there. Got no trouble scoffing those baits, but that is a pretty sizable whiting, I feel. I'm well pleased with that one. Having a boring bite in the session. Oh, my French. Guys, I'm well taken with these small baits. Another frisky little smooth hound there. Not a big fish, I know. It was just nicked under the under the chin. There. I had several rod wrenching bangs that I thought were actually bigger ones. Switch it off for you. You can see him a bit better now. There you go. What a session. Two little smooth hounds, two dogfish, and I've had other whiting as well. So, just send a text to the wife to say, I may well be late back tonight. Because it's beautiful, it's still, it's a full moon. Yes, it's unlikely to have a big fish out because it's not stirred up enough, but it's needed a good old storm. But it's such a pleasure to fish. Black calm, I've got the camera out, no problem. It's above freezing. I don't catch any fish like this. As they say in America, it don't get no better than that. If it does in England, we need a cod. Fish after fish, a double shot again. A whiting and a dogfish. They're loving these combo baits, no question about it. Let's get baits back out. Nothing on the big baits yet, nothing at all. But I've got to leave them out. They have neither way the fish are feeding on the small baits. There might be something out there. Get these back. Guys, another smooth hound. What can I say? Fire going. Smooth hound, third smooth hound, three dogfish, three smooth hound, 25 volt whiting. I mean, if I can get some bacon on, does it get any better than that? Well, I don't know how many whiting I can keep on catching, but this is what I found is a piece of slate which I've washed in the sea. And I'm going to show you that this is an ideal thing to use as a frying pan. So, I've made my little fire pit, which is a depression, so it doesn't burn out too quickly. I'm going to put my frying pan, if you like, up there. Probably get a stone or two just to keep it level. Don't do that burn in the pan. That's what I need to put the stones out of there. That's it. And let that heat up, which means by the time that's heated up, I'll probably add another three or four white and dogfish and two smooth downs. Hopefully. What a disaster, guys. Look at it so hot, the piece of slate's broken. I don't fancy eating crunchy pieces of slate. But I'm going to show you just how hot it does get. And it will, in fact, fry one piece of bacon, but I won't be eating it. Now, normally, if that's one big square, I would eat that. But because it's broken, I've got bits and pieces in there. I suppose I could rinse it in the sea, but you can see that it does actually cook. You could do eggs on there, you could do what you want. Fish, once it gets hot, then it burned down. I let it get too hot and it broke it. You can see, just like a frying pan. Guys, I don't know what to say, they keep coming and coming and coming. Whiting, whiting, whiting. After that smooth hound, there you go. More whiting coming, it's quite a nice one, this one. Anyway, it is now 10 past 10. 
Let's get this guy back. I think that's almost edible size, don't you, that one? But I'm going to put him back. And this one certainly is a putbacker. Thanks for watching the totally awesome fishing show coming out hook. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and watch the totally awesome outdoor show as well. There's going to be lots more fishing films coming if, if I get my workload completed. Right, we'll put the fire out, hit the rope back on it.